Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Jason Lucchese, and welcome to our live YouTube stream here. We are going to be talking about some amazing things on today's episode, and I have with me Mr. Tapatio himself, Michael Bretthauer, a.k.a. The Myth. Myth, you've got a haircut. Let's uh, talk about it. Uh, you know, it looks looks pretty good. I did get a haircut. Uh, it's not uh, it's not really styled right now, but uh, today is the first day here in Indiana. They started opening some things back up, and uh, even though um, I don't go out a lot, I did, the hair was getting a little long. And you, we're, even though on this call we're going to be talking about virtual wholesaling and everything, at some point I still need to talk in front of people sometimes on Zoom calls. So having a big big mop on top of my head was uh, it was a conversation starter for, to say the least for some people. This is true. This is true. It's looking good. I've got the little Elvis uh, style going on. Yeah, it just got uh, a cut, so I need to. I definitely need to. Do your, a little uh, with it. your dad, Sylvester Stallone, would be very happy. Oh yeah, he would be. Sylvester, if you're listening, I think I would do really good on the next Expendables or Rocky movie. Son of Rocky, right here. Come on, do you want people on here? Don't I, don't you guys think I look a little bit like Sylvester Stallone, Adrian? Right? Like I could be Son of Rocky. Uh, Richard was asking, how long will this be? Uh, we're going to, we'll go over some really good stuff here in just uh, a minute. Uh, so we'll get through a bunch of the information that we wanted to cover. Uh, it's not necessarily a webinar. Oh, oh yeah. Al, yeah. Al Pacino too, Mike. <laughs> I do uh, not look like Al Pacino. <laughs> a little bit. You do look a little bit like Al. That's the first uh, time. Uh, Richard, that's the first time I've heard Al Pacino. I've, I like I've that. Rocky a lot. Now it's going to be Al Pacino. I'm Thanks, talk. Richard. You know he's not going to stop, right? Like this will be a thing. <laughs> uh, no, we should be 20, 30 minutes. And then we do answer a ton of questions. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, with the glasses. Yeah, R Richard's on fire today. I can see without the glasses, by the way. So I don't necessarily need them. It's a blurry in one eye. Hey, real quick, I just want to make sure you guys can uh, hear us okay. So if you could give us a big thumbs up, if you can hear us, uh, go ahead and type into the comment section to uh, where you are coming from today. Because our big topic today, right, is, uh, you know, how to wholesale houses virtually from any market. So would love to know where everybody is. We've got a lot of good stuff to cover uh, on today's session. So let's see if we have anybody coming in. Uh, so until then, it's Rocky jokes. <laughs> yep, absolutely. They haven't Steve. stopped, Richard. Or, or no, it's Stephen. Yeah. Oh, Richard's saying you are now the godfather. Oh, I don't know about that. That's to get to that level on the on the on the, with his um, his role in that movie. I don't know. He was a good. Oh, cool. Richard's uh, just a little bit away from us, about three hours in Ohio. Wasn't it snowing out there the other day? I have no idea. I have a buddy in Ohio, and he had snow in his backyard. Uh, we got Steven. We've got Keith. Welcome. We've got uh, Frida. Welcome. I have not made it to PA yet. I want to see Mike's dad's statue, uh, the Rocky statue. <laughs> and I also, uh, I heard it's, it, you know, a big thing to get uh, one of those steak and cheese sandwiches. Well, so, and, and to go to Hershey. Yes. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Jackie, we've got Richard. Uh, then welcome to my little friend. <laughs> and yes, it's no. <laughs> Oh man, I like this. I like this Richard guy. Oh, geez, now we got Al Pacino and Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, we got we, we got to start doing more of this stuff. Uh, uh, so that again, we're we're just a few minutes in. We see that we've got a lot of people coming on. So uh, one of the things that I wanted to uh, discuss right off the bat was, you know, from a virtual standpoint, how do you get documents signed? And uh, I'm going to share. A part with you uh, with my screen. Let me get this up and then I'll be able to, to share it with you. But it, it's pretty simple from a standpoint of being able to uh, share. Let's see here. Let me show my. Yep, this is it. So, we do you all see that uh, DocuSign? Yep. So, we personally use DocuSign for, for everything. Now, it doesn't matter if you have a computer. Doesn't matter uh, if you're doing it from laptop, cell phone, you could upload your documents onto DocuSign and it will 
do everything. It'll have everything for you. All you need to do is have the spots that you want signed or initialed and you'll be 100% good to go. That's This is what we use to get our documents signed. Very Yep. And it's uh, pretty inexpensive. Let me just go over the, the pricing here. Very inexpensive. Let's see here. We I think we just, was it the e-signature plan? Um, or let's see. I don't think we have the real estate one. I don't know. Whatever it is, it's like uh, it's pretty simple. We we, we don't have grandfathered in an older one, maybe. I think I may have gotten grandfathered in. Uh, I think I'm at like 19 bucks, uh, 19 dollars a month. So it might just be the personal one. Uh, but we we act, we actually send more documents than that. So I don't know. I might I might have been grandfathered into a, an older plan, but that that's you know one of the ones we would recommend. There's also some other ones. I'll show you. Uh, Hello sign. You could use hello sign as well. Uh, you could, it's pretty much almost the same exact format as um, DocuSign. It's just, let's see what the pricing is. We, I personally haven't used it, but I know some folks that do and they, they really like it. Uh, it looks like it's pretty expensive though. Wow, that is pretty expensive. So, uh, but the free one is uh, $0 a month. And you could do up to a hundred signed transactions. So that's actually uh, pretty cool. So that's a, a nice do your, use. Yeah, do your first one for free, and then pay for the premium plan if you need it on your next deal. You know. Yeah, but this is a hundred a hundred uh, things that you would need to do per month. So that's uh, that's per month. So that that'd be hard to kind of do in a month uh, to do a hundred deals signed. So. You know, you might go into this plan. You probably don't have to do any other plans. You know, I would just say check them uh, ch check them both out, you know, because I think, Jason, we are uh, grandfathered in on an older plan with DocuSign. I mean, some of these things, you know, we've been grandfathered in on some of the older plans that they have, but they've they've only made them better. Um, yeah. DocuSign, I was showing you that the little red one was an alert I got for a signed document that I need to go look at. So everyone it's you send them out via email, you get the alert and then it's just like a thumbprint away. So that's one of the things I like about the whole virtual aspect. I mean, again, this is virtual wholesaling here. Didn't have to go anywhere to sign it. So it's true. Uh, the, the great thing about this is and we'll be talking about some other things for like going into markets and whatnot, but the, the, you know, either way you'll be good to go with DocuSign, hello, hello sign, those are the ones we use, DocuSign. But as you can see here, Hello Signs, you know, pretty much free, depending on how many contracts you're needing to get signed. Well, look at this from a virtual wholesaling standpoint too. Like whether you're putting together your own deal, I mean, all the things you can do with this, whether it's signing a purchase and sales agreement with a seller, or maybe you're signing a contract with one of your buyers, or maybe you're just putting together a JV agreement because you found somebody who's got a deal or they found you and you just happen to have a buyer or the deal, whichever it is. And you want to quickly get your equitable interest in there so you can send it out to your buyer and get that deal under contract. Boom, here, I got this thing under DocuSign. Let me email it to you real quick. Oh, he signed it. Great. I've already got the button ready to fire the email off to my buyer. I was just waiting for him to send that document back to me. Yeah, and here I'll cover this one too, since we're talking about signatures. But how would you go about closing your deals virtually? If if you guys are, this is one that we always get because there is uh, certain documents that you are going to require hard signatures on. But for the most case, you won't unless you're doing what's called an A to B, B to C transaction. That's the only time that you would actually need to sign uh, a lot of the physical stuff. And even then, you could have it overnighted to you to wherever you are and you could have it signed. Now, if you're out of the country and getting stuff overnighted, that might be a problem. What could happen is if you're out of the country and you need to get something signed, the best thing that I would do is re recommend a POA, a power of attorney. Um, it's actually called an LPOA, limited power of attorney. And I would just do that. So if you're planning on doing any type of vacationing, uh, and, and you know, you're going to be having closings come up, have somebody on your team. Like if I were, if, if Mike were to go someplace, we've done this actually, Jason, you went yeah. to, you went to tell them when you went, cause you went out of the country and I, I was staying here. So you had to initiate that. Yeah, we, I think it was, uh, probably, uh, a while ago is for an anniversary trip to Tahiti. 
Uh, so yeah, we had to sign that because there was, I don't think I was going to be able to get that sign, uh, especially since we were going to be on a hut, uh, on the ocean. So that, that would have been a little difficult to do. But the other, the thing is on this as well, if you have like a JV partner and we're going to be jumping into and talking about that here in just a moment, but if you have a JV partner in the area that you're doing business, they could go and sign documents, get checks, all that type of stuff. Or um, I always do this. I always have wires initiated to where when the transaction is closed, it's closed and wire is sent off. I don't have to pick up a check or anything like that because sometimes depending on the size of the check, if it's $20,000 on up, uh, it could take a little bit to clear uh, in your account. So I would encourage and recommend uh, from a, a signing standpoint, uh, the only documents that necessarily need to be signed are very few and it could either be overnighted or uh, you could have a, a JV partner uh, sign on your behalf with uh, an executed limited power of attorney document uh, from that standpoint. But we are at, at the stage in our business to where we receive wires. Um, we no longer really receive checks unless, you know, it's something that, you know, that, uh, has been agreed upon up front. but 95% of the time it's just wires for us. Uh, there's no point to go to the closing, uh, if you don't want to, uh, I highly recommend not going to the closing. Well, you should look at it. I mean, we're talking virtual wholesaling. That doesn't just mean, <clears throat> Hey, I want to do wholesaling in a part of town or in a state that's far away from me. So I need to do it virtually. I, I, I can't travel eight hours or whatever. But like for us, Jason, the closing table is 45 minutes away, maybe not even. And it's like <clears throat> the only thing that I think about during that time is, OK, 45 minutes to get down there. I'm going to sit there for maybe 30 minutes, you know, getting this waiting in line or not waiting in line, but waiting to get it signed. Then I'm going to spend another 45 minutes going back before I know it. Three hours of my day have been gone on me signing a check. And all of that could have been done virtually, which we do. And it's just like, okay, uh, we sent them the wiring instructions and and then that's it. And then we're just kind of waiting. Has it, has it to the account yet? No. Okay. Then we call, Hey, what's up? We just want to make sure we're good on this closing. Has it gone through yet? Yeah. We've got funds from the buyer. We're waiting for a clear to close, whatever it is. And then phone calls over. You're on to doing something else rather than me driving 45 minutes or Jason, you driving 45 minutes. Yeah. You're going to pick up a check and that's great. But Again, this is virtual wholesale. You don't need to go do that. You know, like it's just an un unnecessary thing. You're this yeah. is a business that's meant to be virtual. Yep. Absolutely. No, great point. Hey, what's up, Trey from Fort Worth, Texas? Welcome aboard. We've got somebody else here from Texas. You guys should connect Jackie. So, yeah, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you hit subscribe. We've got a couple more lives coming up on Wednesday and Friday. So make sure you uh, subscribe to the channel. Uh, we've got some good stuff coming up. So if you haven't done that yet, uh, make sure you do that. And also, too, if you guys have any questions while we're doing this, uh, go ahead and put it into the comment section and we will be more than happy to answer any questions for you. Because I know right now virtual wholesaling is like a, something that's needed, uh, especially in today's uh, economy and market and all that kind of stuff. So let's hop in here. Um, OK, so this is a good one. How can you uh, view the properties if you live a few hundred miles away? So right now, depending on the homeowners and how comfortable they are, uh, so you could either do this. So say, for instance, Mike lived in the market that we were really heavily focusing on. Let's say it was Detroit, Michigan, and I'm here in Indianapolis, Indiana. The thing that I would do is I would have Mike uh, as my JV partner go and take pictures and do a video of the property for me. Now, a lot of people ask like, well, how do I pay that person? Well, they're going to get paid out of the profits of the deal that you're going to be doing. What's that? So um, um, to what you're saying, Jason, exactly what you're saying, I would have somebody go take pictures and how would you do this virtually? How would you see the property? These are pictures sent. They're, they're in a Google drive. I don't know. Somebody shared them with me and uh, it's a property that Jason and I are looking at. Um, and I wanted to see the inside of it. Obviously, after he shared us the details, how do we see the inside of this thing? It's a 15 unit complex. It's again, I think this one's about another 45 minutes down the road. It's a local thing, but I'm not I'm still not going to go look at it. So I asked him to send me a link with the pictures. There's there's a combination of pictures and videos, as you can see in there. And yep. it just keeps going. Um, I mean, that's how I see the house virtually. Yeah. The other thing, too, is and I'll add this back up. Let me go ahead 
add this up. One of the things that we do too, before we get like the team, uh, the team involved with wherever we're doing uh, deals is we'll do uh, Google Maps. So let's just say we go to Detroit, uh, Michigan. And we'll click on this and we'll click on Maps. And let's just, uh, we, we just come down here, we'll check out the, uh, the, the neighborhood and we'll we'll get like an area of view. So best best thing we'll we'll get an example here. Let me grab a let me grab something off of Zillow as far as like uh, an example to use, and I'll show you exactly how we do that. Uh, so Detroit, Michigan, and best thing to do, I'll show you exactly how to get some JV partners on on board as well, so you know exactly how to do that. I've got an address here, so I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. You guys aren't seeing what I'm doing yet, but that's completely fine. Here we are. So this is the property right here uh, that I found off of uh, good old uh, uh, Zillow. So I'd click right here and I'd wanna get like an area of view. So this is like first steps that we do from a due diligence standpoint. And we want to see like, is the is the property like in a, in a state where we want uh, to be purchasing in that neighborhood? We typically look at like sea level areas and above. Uh, so right now our sweet spots is a, is a mid C grade uh, level to probably like a like a B plus. Uh, we don't really do too many high end stuff that would get into an A. So for those of you that aren't familiar with what that is, A is going to be your your top of the market. This is going to be like people uh, that are in that higher. Uh, that higher uh, gross income, then B is going to be upper middle class to high to lower high class. Um, and then you've got C people that's gonna be at the bottom of the middle class uh, up to very high low class. And then you've got individuals, and in I'm talking about class levels from an income standpoint. Then you've got D, which is gonna be very low income, these are gonna be people more than likely on fixed income, section eight housing, uh, neighborhoods that have high crime, uh, high foreclosure rates, high eviction turnover, those types of areas. So we tend to stay away from the D class areas just because uh, that's not an area to where we could you know, do what we ultimately wanna do in our business. So let's see here, do we have a question come in? Um, do you have a script for talking to buyers uh, to build a buyer's list? Um, yeah, I believe we do. We could talk about that a little bit more here in a, in a minute, Stephen. No problem. Buyers are pretty, yeah, pretty straightforward with the scripting. Yeah, and I actually, uh, on one of our videos the other day, I, I had a live call that I did with uh, somebody on there and you could hear exactly what I, what I said on there. Um, but this is what we initially do. Now, when we are looking at a particular property, um, you know, say this property is in Detroit. So I would contact Mike and be like, hey, we've got a property. We looked at it on Google. The area looks good because you guys can see this right now. This is kind of like our our areas that we like to look at. This is kind of more like C plus. Uh, so we would go down, you know, to about C minus. Uh, but this is this is kind of like a, a good area that we would like to to stay in. Uh, the other thing is when we are wanting to work deals out with a JV, depending on the scope of work that that person would do. So say for instance, Mike, Mike's going to do this. Let's get this. Let's get these ones out of the way. Mike's going to go and he's going to take pictures. He's going to do videos. Um, he's going to get, uh, he's going to show the property to potential buyers. Uh, so he's going to put a, a lockbox depending on if the seller is okay with that. And we're going to make sure that, you know, the homeowner knows every step of the way, because right now things are really weird. Uh, so here, here's the deal. So Mike's going to be doing those things. So depending on ready. Yeah. <laughs> so depending on what Mike wants, depending on where Mike is at, we're going to pay him anywhere between 5% and 10% of the profits. And depending on if, if there's any additional stuff, like he's going to negotiate with the buyers, that might go up to 15% of the profit if Mike's going to talk to that individual and build some rapport, get that buyer in there. Now, the other thing too that we have to hold into account for today 
is sometimes these buyers are out of the state out of country. So what we need to do is at this point, we could either do a Zoom call and Mike could go and actually do a walkthrough of the property. Mike could also take his phone and do a, a video call on his phone and show that person everything that they would need uh, to take a look at that, that property, especially if they're out of state. Because uh, a lot of individuals, the properties that we tend to do stuff with, they're either going to be rehabs or properties that are going to be turned into uh, rental properties. So that's what we would do from that standpoint. Five, the five percent of the profit typically be Mike goes and and takes uh, pictures of the property, does extensive work with video, uh, so we could resell the property pretty quickly. Uh, Mike then gets bumped up to ten percent if he's going to put a lockbox on there and meet potential buyers at the property each time. Uh, and then if there's any type of negotiations that we need Mike to help us with, he's going to get 15% of the profits at that standpoint. So hopefully that all makes sense. Uh, Bernadette asked this question, uh, should the JV partner be a realtor so they can get into, uh, get into get pictures of the property? No, that's not necessary. Uh, it could be another wholesaler uh, for all that matters. It can be a real estate agent it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a real estate agent. Welcome, Bernadette. It's good to see you again. I think you and I talked uh, last week, right? So Yeah. Welcome. I remember you got telling me you had a call with Bernadette. That's cool. It's yeah. good. I, I love hearing from Mike when he's able to connect with you guys over the phone. And, you know, we, we get to see you guys comment and stuff on YouTube. And it's really cool when we actually get to talk to you guys over the phone. Yeah, absolutely. So welcome back, Bernadette. Glad you're here. Uh, I think she's actually kind of local, about four hours away from us near in uh, here in Indiana still. So, oh, Bloomington. I think you said Bloomington. I think Bloomington. Yeah. Okay. We got uh, Vonda here. What do you think about using PropStream? I am new to wholesaling, and I am using the seven day free trial. Good question. So, one of the things that I'll tell you is we like PropStream. It's just some of the data isn't 100% accurate. The, the only thing that I would encourage you uh, to go outside of when it comes to PropStream is for your uh, tax delinquent leads. We recently had a training with our partner, uh, Jason Palliser, and we were covering a bunch of stuff on tax delinquent stuff. I think it was probably last week or something like that that we did. It. But uh, other than that, PropStream is good. Uh, just one of the things that I would recommend is, uh, start stacking, doing like a list stack. So if you didn't see that video that we did on list stacking, I would highly recommend it. That's basically where you would take like a vacant home and then maybe like you would put on top of it, tax delinquencies. And what you're doing at that standpoint is you're funneling the leads down to where they have multiple levels of motivation. So hopefully, hopefully that helps because, you know, let's just say you have a vacant vacancy list and it's at 10,000 and then you put on their code violations and that takes the list down now to, you know, a more manageable number of, let's just say 1200. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm glad you remembered that. Awesome. Um, when it comes to the list stacking thing, that is, that is excellent. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Now, does everybody understand here? Does anybody else have any questions on how you can view the properties if you live a few hundred miles uh, away because that, that's ultimately the, the way you, you want to do it. If the homeowner is very adamant, hey, I don't want you coming in uh, the house right now, you know, with everything going on, okay, not a problem. We'll do a FaceTime. We can do a FaceTime. Yeah. There's a lot of people going to be like that. And just like I showed you, like just request pictures. Yeah. Do you guys have pictures? Can somebody send me some photos to take a look at it? I mean, we'll still go look at a house, but by the time I'm going to look at a house, it's because we've already got it. We're good to go. I'm. It's just last minute. Hey, I need a couple of things. And maybe I need to meet the seller to sign something last minute because my buyer's got something going on or my buyer's going to walk. And I'm like, I just want to get something real quick to make sure I don't lose this deal. That's about the time we start to go to driving properties or, you know, in case the buyer wants something like uh, I had one recently where somebody had an oil tanker not one of those things that they have back in the i don't know what, how long ago that was but that oil uh oil tank and it was buried and and the buyer wanted proof like he just wanted a picture of like hey you know it, it doesn't look like the work was done but i was like no nah, it was flattened it was filled up with gravel it's been you know you know all, all over and everything he just wanted to see that that it's been done and i took a picture of the grass i'm like dude look it's it's you can't even tell there's an oil tanker here because it's already been filled in and everything so yeah um, 
that's about the only time when you actually go out and look at it. Yeah. And, and you know, the other thing too, is if you guys want, uh, you know, if, if we get enough interest because we have a decent amount of folks on here right now, if you guys would like to, uh, to have the JV agreement that we use with some of our wholesalers in other areas so that they can get paid and that they know that we have a contract and they'll get taken care of through that contract, let us know, drop a comment and also uh, give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs up if you would like that JV agreement. Also make a comment just letting us know, yes, I would love, I would like that uh, agreement. And we'll go ahead and share that with you because we, we think that's pretty big, especially nowadays. Uh, we have no problem sharing that with you. It's no charge. I'll put it in Wednesday's video. So make sure you're, you're joining us for Wednesday's video as well. Uh, so we talked about that. Now this, this would be good. Um, we, we talked about this a little bit, but how would you go about showing the properties you have your cash buyer? So there's a couple different ways especially in today's market. Uh, you could either do a FaceTime, which we which we talked about, or you could use Zoom. Now, let me show you here. Let me bring this back up. Uh, but I'm going to show you Zoom. And Mike, uh, it's it's something that you could have on your phone as well. It is. So, it is. It's, it actually works because there's a different, few different platforms. Jason, you and I have used a couple of different ones. GoToWebinar is a really popular one. Um, but Zoom's kind of the newer one. It's a lot easier to use and you can just create a link. They have a free account, which is like, I think it's one-on-one. -on -one, oh, 40 minutes. Okay. So you get one-on-one -on -one 40 minutes, but I mean, once you get the pro account, you can actually do a lot more stuff, have more meetings and stuff. So if you have a link, you send to buyers and then maybe a link you send to specific people or whatever, but in the very beginning, the free account is really great. <clears throat> and I don't know if you're real, if you're realizing this, but for those of you saying, because I know I've seen a few comments from people just getting started. I mean, I don't know how many of you people on this call maybe have not done your first deal or maybe you're, you're working to do your first deal. You're building up your real estate business and you're like, man, virtual real estate sounds like a great way to get plugged into this thing. But uh, again, ground floor thinking, obviously you want to put your marketing, Jason, you're going to talk a lot about the leads. And I think we've talked about it in the past. If even for the most part, like in our, um, the videos we've done with Jason, you don't always have to spend a lot of money on leads, but right now saving money on a zoom link, saving money on like, I know we talked about DocuSign, but the hello sign a hundred free. And then yeah. Jason's going to give away the free JV agreement right then and there. You can, you can structure a deal with those, with those resources, with your zoom, with your DocuSign or hello sign and the free JV agreement, then you can construct a deal by just networking with a few people, using that resource to fire off that document. And then, you know, I mean, I, I guess we could talk like about a MailChimp or something later on, but right there, you've got the main important elements to what do I need to close a deal to get all the stuff out of the way? Yeah. Yeah. It, it's free right there, folks. Uh, if you're not doing more than like a one-on-one, -on -one, and a 40 minute limit. It, it shouldn't be more than that, especially if you're just going to do a video walkthrough of the property. Um, and you could use you could use the app. You could use your app. There, there's no reason uh, to, to do otherwise. Uh, your individual, like say you have a wholesaler showing the property, there is no reason why that you can't just use something like a Zoom or a FaceTime uh, using that individual's uh, that, that app on the phone. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. It's absolutely free to use. Uh, Zoom.us is is the, the actual link. Uh, so yeah, definitely check that out. Uh, do we have any questions so far? I know we had a few people wanting the JV agreement and we will put that out on uh, Mondays, or not, today is Monday. <laughs> Wednesday. We, we will put it out, um, we will put it out on Wednesday. Yeah, we're, we're going to be going over lease option deals, which could be another option for you. Could be another option for you, especially when you're doing wholesaling. So we're going to uh, be hopping into talking about lease option deals on Wednesday. So yeah, definitely come back on Wednesday. It does help out if you are a subscriber. So if you have not become a, a channel subscriber yet, make sure you click that button because then you'll receive a notification of when we have new videos, uh, new live streams like this that are coming out. Because you guys know we're, we're live right now. Uh, if, you're, if you're watching this as a recording, it's still, you're getting a ton of, ton of valuable content that people charge uh, quite a bit for. Uh, so yeah, make sure you become a channel subscriber and you'll receive uh, notifications of whenever we have uh, new videos uh, coming up. I will also send out emails to folks as well. So if you're not on our email list, uh, make sure you uh, let us know and we'll, we'll get you added onto that. Um, 
but let's hear. Does anybody else? Let's see. Did any questions come in? Um, I'm more, not more, more, more and more people are getting used to the Zoom stuff. More and more people are getting used to that because this this thing's been going on for a couple of months now. Now, I will tell you this is cool thing. And Jason, we haven't done it yet, but um, <clears throat> there's a farm that will let you rent or pay for a, a is it a goat or an alpaca? to be on your zoom meetings. Now we haven't done that yet, but I always thought it'd be fun. Like the next time we're on a meeting with some, you know, I mean, it's, we're always with serious people. So I'm like, I don't want to burn a connection, but, but that's just, the point is like people are using zoom. I, I'm not saying go out and get an alpaca and bring it on your seller call. But the point is like zoom, it's like more and more people are using it and, and it's being regular now. Like people kind of expect a meeting to be on zoom. Are we doing a meeting? Okay. Where's the, send me the link. You know, nobody's where are we meeting at? Right, right. No, absolutely. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm going to put this up. So if you have any questions, drop a comment. But what I'm going to show you right now is like how to find like JV partners. Uh, some of the things that you can do is uh, come on over here to services. And I'm in Indianapolis right now. So you could go to wherever area that you want. And I'm going to click on real estate. Uh, everybody could see right now, right, Mike? Yep. Okay. So best thing to do is come on over here. Uh, you see where it says sell your house. Um, I'm not sure what FAV in hours means. Mike, do you, do you know what that is? FAV is a new one for me. Yeah, they keep coming out with all these different uh, terms. So uh, we're hired fast, sell your house. I'm not sure if this is somebody that, um, that's probably not a we buy houses person. So essentially what we're trying to do is find somebody that is like a, a you know an individual that is uh we could see like this one right here house flipping and we could see uh we have 30 years of experience okay so that's restoration stuff so essentially let us buy your home quick so this might be somebody yep uh so this is a, a we buy houses person so we could see if this individual is somebody that we can uh do some jv partnering with and see if that individual uh, is, is somebody that's interested. Now, this is just one particular avenue uh, that, that you can do. Now, the other one could be uh, Facebook. I'll show you how to do this one. I'm trying to see if I recognize the number. And let's just say, uh, if you guys aren't members, also two of our, this is, one, this is our group right here, Wholesaling Houses Virtually. Uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, one of the best things uh, to do with this is come over to members. And you could start finding people that are in your uh, particular area and you could start connecting with them. So you could see we've got a huge list of folks in here and you could start finding people that are, you know, somewhat in your area. Now, even though I, I want you guys to become members of our group, one of the best ways to, to connect with people is finding uh, particular groups that are geographical to the area that you're wanting to do business in. So if, say for instance, I want to find a Detroit uh, real estate. So I'm going to type that in. I'm going to click the magnifying button. And where I'm wanting to go is right here. I'm going to want to click on groups. And then I'm going to want to find different groups uh, that are in Detroit and will allow me to uh, find people. So I know this is relatively a pretty big group. Uh, and they do, they, they have uh, 7,788 members. So what I would recommend you do is uh, click join group and then you just have to answer questions. So uh, you must answer all three. Uh, what do you, uh, why do you want to join this group? Uh, network, so network and see if I can get some deals, get deals done. Uh, are you a real estate investor? Yes. Real estate investor. Uh, we do all over the Detroit area, area and suburbs. So these are good groups to get in. Uh, if you are posting a deal, uh, and I'll just put yes, I agree, and I'll put that. So I'll click submit. Then you just have to wait uh, for your turn. Uh, to get accepted into there. But when you do, you can see, look, these are 7,782 uh, people and you can start connecting with those members and you can start seeing if those individuals are folks that would be interested in doing some JV deals with you. 
Uh, now, some of you have also seen some of our uh, LinkedIn training, but you could go on to LinkedIn as well. Let me go ahead and sign in. And Mike, do you, do you have anything you wanted to bring up? You know, again, a lot of this stuff, <clears throat> I always just like to talk about, you know, using the tools. Somebody, I, th I can't remember what it was, asked about PropStream and if that was a good recommendation. And, and obviously it is a good recommendation for, it does a lot of great stuff. Uh, what I don't want you to do is to get all wrapped up in in the tool aspect of it. Because some of the stuff, like especially when it comes to comping out properties, Jason already kind of showed you, hey, you can go on Zillow and you can see what properties are selling for. See, if you're going to buy a service just so you can comp out properties, it's kind of unnecessary, you know, yeah. even though it's got great data. You, br you bring up a great point. Uh, Mike knows this because um, I, I like to be very lean from a business standpoint. If, if there is unnecessary things that you're paying for, Mike and I are really good at this. We talk and communicate all the time and say, hey, is this, is this service that we have? Is it working? Is it viable? If it's not, it gets cut immediately. And that's the way you need to operate within your business too. Like some of the things that we're doing, we just recently, well, not, we haven't executed it yet, but once we execute, I believe it's going to save us, you know, right off the bat, uh, it's going to save us like $600 a month. And then long-term residuals from there, it's going to save us thousands uh, in the, in the long run. So uh, do you essentially need prop stream right off the bat? It depends on what your budget is and if you're getting actual deals in your pipeline. Is your business paying for prop stream should be the first question. Yeah. And if, it's, if you're paying for prop stream, can you afford to pay for prop stream? You know, because. And I'll go over that Zillow strategy here in just a second that Mike was going over for comp out properties. I know I've done it in some of our recent uh, YouTube videos, but if everybody would like for us to show you how to do that, we do that with Zillow and we also do it with Redfin. So if every if everybody comments in and they want to see that, um, I'll be more than happy to show that on today's call. Also too, if you have any questions, make sure you drop a comment below. Let me show you this LinkedIn part. I, and then I'll show you one more after this. But here's what we would do. We would type in uh, real estate investor. Now I don't typically do real estate because that's going to pull up. That's going to pull up too many. Uh, I want to target uh, the list as far as I can. I'm going to go here to people, and then that's going to uh, give me 357,000 uh, results. Now what I want to do is come over here to filter. Okay, just remember I clicked on people. So far, we've done two steps. I've typed in real estate investor, and then I clicked on people. Next step is I click on all filters, and I'm gonna go over here. And as you guys can see right here, I'm just using the free account. Using free account, if you guys want to try premium, they allow you to do a 30-day trial for free. Um, and it's really cool. Uh, you can check it out and see if it's something that you want to use. But again, if you are not doing deals and you don't have the income coming in yet to justify it, then there's no reason uh, to, to do it right now. So we come over here, um, go to Greater Detroit. So, so right now when I went to filter, all I did, second, third connection. The main reason why is people that are first connections, those are the people that I'm already connected with. So I'm coming over here to second and third connections because I'm wanting to connect with new folks. The second and third connections are people that I'm not connected with. So let's come over here. Let's click, click apply. Now you can see this is a much more reasonable number. We've got 2,500 results. So you can see Brad's over here, Tom's over here, uh, Garrett. And I'll just look at one right now. So let's click on uh, Tom. And I don't think you guys can see this part, but um, he does have a custom URL, which is a great sign. He's got the 500 plus connections. He's got a background image. He's got an, a picture. And we're also uh, seven mutual groups. So if you guys didn't see it, I don't want to, some people have already seen this, this uh, training that we've done on LinkedIn. I don't want to go over that same information again. Um, but this is, this is a great strategy. Also, too, you guys are watching this right now on YouTube. I'm going to show you a little hack that you can use. So say, for instance, we wanted to do this. Uh, we buy Detroit, Detroit houses. Okay. So this is getting me geographically looked uh, into this position. So what I'm wanting to do is I'm going to come over here to filter again. I'm going to click on channel. 
And then what I'm wanting to do is I'm wanting to find people that have channels in this area. And what I want to do too, let's just do this. I'm going to click minus off channel. I just want you guys to see everything. Should I buy, should I buy a Detroit house for $65,000? So this might be somebody that is an active individual. Now we'd know Dennis. Uh, Dennis has gone through uh, our partner, Jason Palliser's uh, program. So these are folks that are individuals that you can do stuff with. So if we clicked on uh, his channel here, I want you guys to see Metro Detroit home buyer. You could click on it. What does he have right here, Mike? Website, phone, his, website, his phone number, basically anything you need to get a hold of the guy. Yeah. So you could get a hold of Dennis pretty easily. Uh, now he doesn't have a lot of subscribers on here, but that's okay. Uh, he might not be on YouTube all the time, but at least he's got some information for you. You go to his website and you could give him a call. You could be Dennis's number one person that he works with. If he's got a list of three VIP people and he's got nine subscribers and you're the second person that reaches out to, Hey, I saw your YouTube channel. Uh, I, or I found you on YouTube. I'm, you know, I'm a real estate investor here in Detroit as well. Uh, looks like, you know, you've been coming across some stuff. I've actually been coming across a few deals myself on such and such areas. Didn't, uh, didn't know, you know, if you were looking, but want to see if, uh, maybe we could work together on a few things, you know, and then, then you and Dennis do a deal. And all of a sudden you, Dennis is the only person, you know, you're on his VIP list. He's on your VIP list. And Jason, we've talked about this before, but when you, and somebody's asking about the buyers list earlier, when you put together a solid buyers list, yeah, people say, yeah, I have 500 people on my list. I've got a thousand person buyers list. Bro if you've got two or three good people, they're going to buy the bulk of your stuff. You'll have 10, maybe like most, that's like a big list. Five people is like the people that don't buy a lot. You know, they're just the kind of, okay, these people buy sometimes. And then two or three are like, yeah, these are my VIP guys. If I send it to them and one of them's going to say yes. So in the off chance that one of them doesn't say yes, then I can go to this other group. But it, most likely two of these VIPs are going to say yes. And we've, we've come across that where we, I think we've actually... I don't like saying this, but I've, I think I've made my VIP buyers a little upset a couple of times when they both got the deal. One guy wanted it and he's like, oh, and I was like, well, I already got accepted from my other buyer. And he's like, well, I'll throw an extra thousand dollars for old time. But my point is like, you don't need 10, 15, 20 million buyers, a few good people like talking to Carl or whoever else. And just, hey, you know, I saw you want to maybe we can do something together. A simple YouTube or a LinkedIn search using YouTube. Again, all virtual, none of this stuff you had to pay for. You didn't need to sign up for LinkedIn. You needed to sign up for any services. All those things will come. Like you will eventually pay for this stuff, but it'll scale up with what you're doing. And I think that's kind of the whole point of virtual wholesaling for most people is, hey, I want to do real estate for the first time. So how do I even evaluate a deal? Boom, go on Zillow, do this, look at the recent properties. Well, how do I find somebody to buy a property? Boom, go on LinkedIn. Boom, go on Craigslist. Well, what about signing the contracts? Boom, go to HelloSign, go to DocuSign. I mean, what else is there, Jason? What is the next step from there? Funding your deal? Uh, well, yeah, just cash buyer from that standpoint. And, you know, having the cash buyer uh, give you your fund, give the funds for earnest money deposit and you're good to go. Contracts, which we've given away as well. Contracts to get the thing closed. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And I think, uh, who said this? Uh, Bernadette did. Uh, what do you think of getting comps on net R line? So we've, we've used that website to get like data from like uh, public record stuff, but I, we haven't personally used it for uh, comps. So great question. I don't think Mike has either. No, I got to, I'll be honest with you, Bernadette. I use Zillow. That's like my go-to because you know, we're educators and a lot of our, you know, the people that we work with, they're in multiple states. And yeah, while we have connections here in Indiana that can give us uh, <clears throat> access to them less through our agents that we know, you know, I don't even start there because that's a process, you know, having to get MLS comps. I'll start on Zillow. And if it looks promising, then I'll, I'll take it to the next step. If I have to talk to an agent in an out-of-state area, hey, I've got this property. I, this is what I'm finding. You know, this is where I'm at. I've obviously already developed a relationship with this person. I'm not just reaching out to somebody out of the blue. Um, and Jason talks about building those relationships all the time. But, you know, there's no reason to have to pay for comp data when there's just so much comp data out there. It's not hard to find out what houses are selling for. It's not. And we'll, we're we going to be going over that here in just a second with Zillow and also Redfin. But uh, uh, Shivoni... Uh, was asking, does wholesaling or marketing a property to a buyer that was already listed by an agent work the same as marketing off-market property? No, 
Uh, so it, it does not. So if, if either the property is listed or it's expired, that expired listing is, is not going to be able to help because a buyer is going to be able to see that that property is recently listed, what the price was for. So it's not essentially going to be a strong off market deal. So you just want to pay attention to that. Um, the marketing aspect's not going to work as well uh, as being able to show that deal uh, as far as being off market. A, a true off market deal means to us that it's not on Zillow, it's not on the MLS, it's not on any websites uh, that we could go searching and see that this property is is listed. The only way works. you would find these pro an off market property is if I gave you the address so you could go look it up, and then it would just say the address and like if you went to Zillow, it would just say off market property. Here's here's what we think it's worth. Yep, uh, this is a great question. So Richard, I've bought foreclosures and estate properties, have restored them, and then sold them flip. Uh, what's the best way to find those properties? So if you're wanting to get those types of properties, uh, what I would recommend is either you or somebody else on your team. Um, and again, you don't have to pay this teammate out of pocket. They get paid when a deal gets done, but you can go get uh, pre foreclosures at the, um, at the county clerk's office. You could get that information. So if you want to get uh, short sale information. You can get those properties there. If you want to get state properties, there's two different ways that we would recommend that. Uh, you could either, you could go to the clerk's office and get recently filed probates, um, or you could work directly with attorneys that have individuals like family members that have uh, executors, uh, power of attorneys that have recently lost a loved one, and the property is worked through a trust. And that way you could work directly with those individuals and it could be all done over the phone. Sometimes attorneys do like to meet up face to face or in today's uh, in today's turmoil, you could also uh, do face to face stuff with them like through a Zoom conference uh, that works as well. So that's the best way that we have found with getting estates through either probate or through trusts that we could communicate with attorneys on. Foreclosures, we don't necessarily do a whole lot with REOs, um, but we do stuff with short sales. So hopefully that makes sense. Best way to get the foreclosures is uh, have somebody go and bid on properties for you at auctions. Uh, that would probably be the best way uh, to get that handled. Um, also, too, if you want to, you could work directly with banks uh, in their asset manager uh, de departments and divisions. Uh, to get those properties before they actually go to the auction. Uh, you can get those properties directly off market before they ever hit the auctions. Uh, that's something that we've done in the past. So hopefully that that makes sense. Yeah. And it's also, again, that's another strategy where you don't need to pay for all these expensive platforms and tools to get like you do it virtually from your computer. A lot of the tools are already available online. Your expenses are mainly normal business expenses, I like to call it, you know, like, yeah, I've got my internet bill, I got my phone bill, you know, I've got my gas bill for the car, I pay for, you know, a CRM, I got a monthly CRM, I pay for the annually, but it's calculated over monthly. Uh, we've got an email platform, we've got text message platform, you know, like those are just kind of standard business expenses. But when it comes to like, getting a deal out there. I'm not like, okay, now I got to spend 10,000, you know, dollars on a list. Plus I got to mail to that list. Plus I got to do this. And then I got to spend another $800 to do this. No, it's like, all right, I'm going to skip trace this list. Okay, good. There's 15 cents a lead. I've already got my CRM in place. Uh, I don't need to buy the list. And I mean, the way Jason and I, we like to do it. And I think, I think everybody <laughs> likes to do it this way is putting together a marketing campaign where you don't have to send 10 or 12 different letters where you can send a couple and then have the phone take over the rest. But you should be, you know, planning this thing out so you can get started and not have all these extra bells and whistles you need to manage, you know? Yep. Like, so even if it, like, I know I said CRM and Jason, I mean, maybe one day you and I will do a, a video on tools because you and I had played with, I know PropStream was one. People have asked us about a whole bunch of different kinds of tools and uh, over the years and, and, some of them are like most of them are really good, but it just kind of if you're not doing it right, if you're in a, the premature stage of your business, you're building up a virtual business and you think, all right, virtual means I need to have this this many digital things. Otherwise, I can't be virtual. That's not what you yeah. can, you can be virtual with a phone, an Internet connection and a spreadsheet. Yep. 
So Richard was asking, you know, that's a ton of resources. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I, I'm sorry for rattling off so many. So best best thing to do is if you want to just knock it all out uh, at once, you can either do this or you could have somebody else do this. I typically would just pay somebody to go get this data because it typically would take a long time to get this uh, if you just went and did it yourself. Uh, have somebody go down to your county clerk's office or the area that you're wanting to do business. So it might actually be multiple counties. So I would go there, pay them to go and get the uh, pre-foreclosure information. So anybody that's been served a notice of default uh, or a Liz pendants, uh, you could get that data pretty quickly. Just have them, unfortunately, they're gonna have to jot down everything. Uh, so just that's why I would recommend have somebody go get that data for you. It's the most accurate when you go to the clerk's office. While they're there, they could also get the probate information. Uh, so you can go get that uh, probate information. Uh, you could find out who's recently passed. And uh, so if some counties don't want to give off the probate information, you could find out like uh, who's recently passed and find out death certificates. Uh, and you could find out information through that avenue as well. So that's just one source. Go to the clerk's office. And then there's other ones out there too, Richard, that you can pay for. But that's completely up to you on uh, if you want to pay for those uh, for pay for those sources or not. Well, again, Jason, so, just like you said, you know, you and I talk. We like to run. It's uh, running a lean business isn't isn't about being cheap. It's about being smart. When Jason and I were talking about this recent expense, that's going to take us. I think it's going to save us like six hundred dollars a month. And in the grand scheme of things, when you think, well, six hundred dollars, like you're really making a big deal over saving six hundred dollars a month. Okay, yeah, for the first month, it might just be $600. For the second month, it might just be $1,200. But over that year, we've accumulated enough money to now completely do a new strategy, do a new type of mailing list, invest in a new platform. I mean, there is so much money that's going to open up doors that would normally have just gone into the software that we were no longer. I mean, like, I might as well just go outside and burn $600 and get a little heat. That's how much use, I mean, I don't want to say useless, but if you're not actively using a tool like PropStream and it's a great tool. It does a lot of wonderful things. But if you're using it for one thing, to comp properties, something you can do for a lot less, you're essentially just burning your money and then putting yourself in a negative attitude because you're like, Gosh, this business sucks. I'm spending all this money. I've got everything going out and nothing coming in. It's frustrating. Well, of course you're frustrated. You're spending all this money on tools and you're not focusing on what's really important. Yep. No, exactly. Great point. Um, so let's, I want to show you guys this uh, Zillow thing here. So I pulled up Indianapolis so you guys can see this in the upper left-hand corner. So what I'm going to, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on this. I'm going to click on solds. I'm going to click on done. So once I do that, I'm going to be able to find the properties that I want. So say for instance, uh, my comp that I'm looking for is a three bedroom and it's got one bath. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to also uh, take off all these other ones and just have houses because my property is a house. And then I'm going to come over here to more. And my house has a minimum uh, square footage of a thousand. And I'm going to go, let's see here. Where, where's, oh yeah, sold. Oh, that's the bottom, yeah. sold uh, in last 12 months. So I'm going to come back here last 12 months. And then I'm going to click done. So I still have 4,849 properties that I can go uh, go look at. So we've got price right here. You could also add on. But then I'm going to come over here and let's say my property, where's stuff that we, we come over here? Oops. So this is like kind of like the Irvington area. Zillow, so, has, Zillow has changed it a little bit. You used to be able to just type in the address and then zoom out. But then they kind of, I think they caught on to it. So this is the hack way to do it. Yeah. So that you can see right here. Let, let's say our property is right here, Mike. You, you see where this, my little, the little hand is. So right off the bat, we could already see their property over here. There's a property right here. There's another one there. So we, we've got properties within a good radius. This is, this is the, the, the area that we would like to stay in. So typically when you, you, cross certain areas like East Washington. That's a big one. You can see as soon as I cross, properties start decreasing uh, quite a bit. So maybe I want to stay like within a certain radius of, of where my subject property is. And you can see if I have a, let's just say I have a three bedroom, one bath. This is a three bedroom, two bath. 
So I would just need to take a look, especially look at the square footage as well. Let me do this. Let's just say our, our square footage on our house, let's just say it's 1500. So I'm gonna stay a little bit more uh, into that area. So you can see it says nine results now, that, but that's because I'm, I'm zoomed in. If I zoomed out, it'd be different. So we've got a comp right here, which is 204,000, it's a three bedroom, one bath. So this is ideal. We've got another one right here, uh, three bedroom, two bath. So if you know your numbers and you could minus off like what another bedroom would cost, then you can do that. But once I scroll out, oop, let me scroll out. You can see there's there's plenty of, pro I keep, I'm still getting used to my, my new laptop here. <laughs> so you can see like there's different properties. You could take a look at all these solds and this is different. Now this is gonna take you a little bit more time now, one of the things that I would encourage and recommend when you're first getting started, you need to figure this stuff out yourself and, and you know, have people like Mike and I help you out. But what, I'm, what I meant by that was learn the business, understand the business. And, you know, once you get a feeling for like how to pull comps and all that type of stuff, then that's how you start outsourcing to virtual assistants and you yeah. can start having things done in your business through them because- you're not going to last long in business if you're always doing all of the stuff inside your business. You need to have other people doing the things inside of the business so that you could focus on building that business up, if that makes sense. You'll give that's yourself a hard time. Everybody, and type in yes, if that makes sense, that you shouldn't be the one inside the business. You should be the one focusing on the outside so that you're building up your empire. Does that make sense, Mike? Yeah, you'll be giving yourself, and I, and I know this is a callous way to put it or whatever, like you'll be digging yourself into an early grave if you think you're going to do this by yourself and then and then cut everything else out and just, oh yeah, I can do all this. Like it's not going to happen. You're, you'll get your first couple of deals in, but then at some point you're not making money anymore. Now you're spending money. You made a couple, you made some money and now you're to the point where you can't make money by yourself. You need people. Um, like one thing I really like, with the Zillow thing here is on the right hand side, you see how Jason's is screen. It's got those, all the yellow dots that are on the screen right now on the right hand side, it'll only scroll through the pictures of the properties that are on the left hand side of the screen that are all the little dots. So if you want to zoom in further and you only want, cause what your next thing you want to do from this step is okay. Now that I see I'm in the right price range, I'm in the right area. I'm not crossing over any over major streets. You know, now I want to start looking at uh, architecture. Are these properties not just the same age? You know, are they both built in the 70s, 80s, 90s, whatever, but body style? You know, is it a ranch style? Is it a two story? Is it a brick? Is it siding? Does it have a patio? Does it have a garage? Is it attached? Is it detached? It's easy to go through, like just scroll through the pictures up and down and then isolate. Okay, this property makes sense. This one makes sense. This one makes sense. Write down the address. And then if you're not using a CRM or like Jason, have you given away the MAO calculator on YouTube? Yes, I have. Okay. Well, folks, you need to, I don't know what video you you gave that one way in, but you need to go back to the video. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll show folks right now. Go ahead and talk though. Okay. You need to go back to the video that Jason's about to show you because everything we're talking about right now on Zillow, that's what this MAO evaluator, I, I made this for myself. When I was evaluating properties and way back when, when I was having struggling with trying to figure out ARVs and what a property is worth and how to make an offer. And I'm doing this the same way you're doing it virtually from my computer. So I created this. It's just a simple spreadsheet, nothing fancy. Anybody can make it, but I, we did make it available. Um, and you just type in property data. Okay. Address, number of square foot number of bedrooms, and then you do three of those comps with your subject property and it spits out, okay, given the basic math, the 65% on this minus all the fees that you type into the available spots, you're going to be able to make a maximum allowable offer based on your information of $75,000. And it gives you a couple of different, like 65, 70, 75, I think maybe 80. I don't remember because it's California that gets up there. Um, yeah. Mike, it was in this video right here. This is actually a video. I'm surprised that the views are so low, but this gives you the exact step-by-step -step process for what we do for uh, HUD foreclosures. So if you would like to get involved with like flipping HUD homes, government foreclosures, all that kind of stuff. I literally went over in the 17 minutes and 30 seconds how to find, bid with the right numbers and uh, get 
get the uh, get those bids uh, locked in and you win. Uh, but check that one out. Uh, and right here, here's access to our deal calculator at no charge. Uh, you just click on it and it automatically downloads downloads it. No email is uh, required and you're good to go. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, guys, every, guys and gals, ladies and gentlemen, everybody that's on this call, um, we've talked about, you know, doing version. I don't know what I think that's 6.0 at this point because it started off really simple. But we're at we add more features like I know people consider they're like, well, what about rehab costs? What if I have this problem? What if I have this problem? And I'd always thought about adding these elements to the calculator like, well, I could I could plug in a quick form for that. And so if, if enough people like it and enjoy it, I, I probably would do that. And then Jason would make it available on a on another training, maybe when we talk more about comp and properties. So it just just type it in. Let us know if you if you get a chance to check out that one, go to the video, download it use it and then if there's things like yeah i would love extra features maybe this this and this i will do it and again it's not we're not selling this thing like I, i'm just going to give it back to you guys because we use this this was something it wasn't something created as a as a selling tool it was something created out of hey i have a problem in front of me i'm learning how to do this virtual real estate investing business i need to learn how to comp out properties and make offers properly without sounding like an idiot over the phone and i need to do this quickly okay I need to do this quickly with them on the phone or I need to call them right back. And that's how this calculator spreadsheet came about. Yep. No, absolutely. Hey, Trey, you're welcome. You're welcome, buddy. If you have any questions about it, let us know. Okay. Uh, Mike, Mike designed that. And uh, that's what we use in our business. Um, we had a question come in from George. Do you have a virtual course? If yes, how much? Uh, what I would recommend if anybody has any questions uh, about any of the trainings that we have, uh, reach out to Mike. Uh, it's Michael at JasonLucchese.com. Uh, so feel free to do that. Uh, Michael at JasonLucchese.com. Uh, I'll leave that up there for a second, but I, I, I'll come right back to it. We had a question come in. Uh, Jason, can you elaborate on contacting asset managers to get REO lists and do you have a script for them? Uh, yeah, I'll show you here exactly how we do it on LinkedIn uh, so that you can get a better feel for it. Um, but this is, again, this is a, a free way to get deals. Uh, you come up here, type in asset manager. We're going to click on, we want people. So when you do that, you're going to find uh, 2.5 million people um, on here. Now, unfortunately, Asset managers could literally be anywhere in the entire world and they've got residential and commercial uh, real estate. So let's do this. Let's come over here and start narrowing it down. So I want to get real estate. I want to get second and third connections. And I want this individual, let's just say, I want them to be in like a central hub is gonna be like Chicago for, for us. And and you could scroll down here. You could also see if there's any other information that you want to put. But right now, this should be good. So I want to click apply. And then it's going to narrow. Yep, it's going to narrow it down to 2,500. So you can see REO Asset Manager Fay Servicing. Now, let's go ahead and click on Amy. So she's got 235 connections now. The training that we had that came out not too long ago, I always say have at least 300 connections or more. But for these folks, it's going to be a little bit different uh, because they are like REO individuals. So I would, you know, just kind of take it. I would try and see that they have at least 150 to 200 connections and having mutual connections helps as well because it helps you uh, talk to them and communicate with them a little bit more. Now. Why am I showing you this? Because right now, as soon as the market reopens, do you know what we're going to have a big flood of more than likely? People are doing mortgage forbearances and they're not going to be able to afford their balloon payment. Um, a lot of people are cashing out their retirement funds right now and they're still not going to be able to afford uh, that, that mortgage forbearance, that balloon payment that's going to be due here real soon. So one of the things that I would recommend is start getting in contact with these REO asset managers and just, you know, putting it out there. Uh, the individuals that aren't going to be able to do, you're not going to be able to do things with are, are like the big, big banks. So Bank of America, Wells Fargo, SunTrust, um, you know, all the big banks out there, you're not going to be able to do stuff with them. But this one with Amy, uh, with Faye Servicing, uh, 
uh, it's a servicing company. So they might have uh, individuals that have loans that are in default and uh, they might be going to foreclosure soon. So before they uh, have it go to an agent, you could get in and get on board with this individual that might be able to uh, send some deals your way. And that's what we've done in the past. Uh, a nice little hack here too, is you could see, uh, let me click this down. But you see here on the the right the right hand column it says people also viewed. You can see these are all pretty much asset managers. Okay, so you've got another another area here to where you could just start contacting people. So if I clicked on Derek right here, uh, he's got two hundred ten connections. We've got four mutual connections. Um, you know, he's REO asset manager. Uh, and it's for a company that more than likely is going to sell off uh, some of those assets. So you can see here too, we've got Julie, Colby, all those folks there. Uh, so that's a really great way for you guys to, to get in with those folks as well. Uh, but yeah, if you guys have any questions too about any of the training that we have, uh, th we do our YouTube live streams just to kind of help you guys and give content. We're, we don't want to you know, overload you guys with too much. But if you guys have additional questions, you can feel free to reach out to Mike about any of the, the stuff we have outside of the YouTube training that, that we're sharing with you guys. Yeah. Uh, this is but hopefully that makes sense with what we just did uh, with showing that, you know, that right there is huge, especially right now for today. Um, that's going to be huge. Well, this uh, is but Mike, do you have any questions or anything you want to add? No, yeah. If people do have questions, I, I was going to ask this question, and I want to kind of piggyback on what you just—well, not piggyback, just emphasize something. But if there's something that you guys want, and from the virtual real estate standpoint, Jason and I we're covering some of the most, I think, biggest struggles we had getting started. Things that we were struggling with, like oh, you know, spending lots of money and investing in all these tools, and then where do we find people? And now we're just like, you know, all these resources that were literally right in front of us all this time, and we had to pay a whole bunch of money to, to find out that this stuff was here already. Um, so if you have questions and you're, you're like, man, I, okay, this is great, but I'm also struggling with this type that in another thing I wanted to share was this, the thing we're talking about with LinkedIn connecting with asset managers. And, and again, something we do a lot on these YouTube videos, which is why we really appreciate you coming on them. Um, some of the stuff we don't share outside of our like live events. So a lot of this asset manager stuff, We've really only talked about that during live events here in Indiana, I think maybe one time in Vegas. Um, and we don't have those all they're, they're not like on a schedule where it's like, hey, every six months we know it's, hey, do we have time to do one? OK, our business is, you know, have we set up enough time that we can step aside for six months, put together this you know, training and, and get people there and teach them this? No. OK, well, we're focusing on a real estate stuff maybe next year. You know, like it's not something we do all the time. So we do want to step out of the box a little bit with this and and tease you not tease you but give you enough where you could literally like everybody on this call right now could literally take those steps because jason i don't know if you emphasize it hard enough I, I mean you said it but i didn't see any comments coming through and i don't so i don't know if it got absorbed hard enough that what are people well, doing thing too is my i was only able to share that i shared that really quick probably three four minutes it took me to go through that you got to think when we do our live trainings uh you know we spend two days on on tactics and strategies just for finding asset managers right and but i think what i what i wanted to say was the the importance that i know you tried to get it but i don't know if it's ringing in enough if ringing in enough bells right now that these people are going to be full with deals that they need to talk to people like us and people like us that have already have connections with them the ones that we've having conversations in the past or inventory might have been a little bit lower in the next coming months is going to explode. Like you, everybody on this call should right now, if you don't have a LinkedIn account, you should create one. And then you should do the same exact criteria Jason typed in and connect with somebody and just have a conversation just to just to be like satisfy your own curiosity. Maybe you think we're full of crap. So go ahead. Yeah, I was talking to these guys. I was watching on YouTube. They think <laughs> everything's coming to, you know, markets. Are people really falling into forbearance? Yeah, actually, your inventory kind of sucks. Oh, all right. Well, are you going to be selling any of this stuff or what? Because I'm buying. It, well, last I think they reported last month for April that there was 3.1 million homeowners that did the mortgage forbearance or that were in default. Dude, there are so many mortgage like Jason. I know short sales, I think, kind of scares some people. 
because it did used to be a difficult thing to get through. Well, um, if, folks, if folks want us to do something on that, I'd be more than happy to to do a training on that. That's that's not a problem at all. Yeah, let us know because I know short sales can be kind of scary. We won't be, we don't have time to get through it right now, but from what it was to what it is, and then I guess we had the unique experience of seeing both sides of it. Um, so short sales are really actually not that scary. Yeah, if we get enough people saying, "Hey, yeah, Mike, Jason, can you guys uh, talk to us a little bit about short sales?" Be more than happy to do that. And uh, as you guys can see up on here, there's also going to be a, a wave for HUD foreclosures uh, that are going to be coming up. So as I showed you just a little bit ago, we, we've got a training on uh, YouTube uh, tr training video on it. Um, so I would recommend it. The, there's 37 right now. Last month, uh, it was it was it was probably in the mid 20s. So it is starting to pick up. It is starting to pick up once once those foreclosures uh, start picking up through the government being able to actually start executing foreclosures. Um, this this is going to jump up a lot. And I would highly encourage folks to check out uh, the video that we did on it. Uh, let's see here. Thank you, Richard. And Jason, you actually <laughs> look like the rock. I don't know about that one. That can't be you. That can't be me. There we go. Dwayne Johnson's on the house. There we go. Yeah. Uh, Frida, I'm very interested in short sales. Okay, cool. We could talk about that. Uh, I have to run to an appointment. What's the best way to get in touch? Uh, the best way, Richard, is the Michael at JasonLucchese.com. Uh, that goes to Michael, but uh, Mike and I, you know, chat and we'll we'll discuss uh, any, any type of questions that you have, buddy. Uh, Frida, please. I need help finishing getting up my website, phone, first mailer list. Is that? Hey, Keith, uh, I'll send you an email. All right. You think you're, I think you're a member of our tax delinquent. I think that's what you're talking about. So let me shoot you an email. Yep. Absolutely. Frida, I appreciate that. That's really kind of you to say that. Thank you for your generosity. May it be returned a hundredfold. And we're, we're not expecting anything uh, in return here. We just want to we just want to be able to put out content because this stuff wasn't really available to me in 2008 uh, when I first got started. So I'm just trying to, you know, Mike and I are just trying to do this. Um, Mike comes up with some really cool thumbnails and we we're talking, uh, you know, about having him come on more. Uh, so, you know, we just want to try and share what we're doing. Um, you know, not everything that we do is 100% perfect, but it's proven and we've been getting results since 2008. So I appreciate your kind words for you. That really means a lot. Um, where do you get your VA foreclosures? Um, that's a great question. So VA foreclosures are, I think, essentially going to be on the HUD website as well. So both HUD so FHA and VA loans both go through HUD. That that's where both of them go through. Good question. That's a great question. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Michael. That would be awesome. Okay, cool. You're welcome, Keith. Um, yeah. I love that. You know what, Jason? I'm sorry. I I want to say more when you're saying like we really appreciate that. Was it uh, Frida? Uh, yeah. Bert, you said something to me really nice the other day, Jason. I think I told you about what she said actually. Um, and yeah, we really do appreciate you guys. I mean, obviously we do this business and we like what we do. And obviously we have a side of our business where we do educate, but I think there goes a little bit more into being a real estate investor and being a businessman that goes into educating, just educating in general, like maybe um, people like you and me that, you know, like people like everybody that's on this call was, we were in the shoes. Jason was in those shoes once I was in those shoes once, and it can be really hard and scary and frustrating and mad. And you're just, there's a whole lot of mistrust and a whole lot of, you know, just BS going on. It's like, Hey, there's gotta be a place where I can sit down and at least just figure out like, is this for me? How would I get it going? What are the very basic steps? And then help me decide where I should put my money. You know, a lot of stuff works. A lot of strategies work. Jason, we're going to talk about lease options on Wednesday, which is a fantastic strategy. We've talked about tax delinquents, which is another fantastic strategy. I mean, short sales, if enough people are interested in that, let us know. We'll talk about that. Again, I know I'm sounding a little bit repetitive, but a fantastic strategy. I mean, look what kind of market we're in right now. These are the deals. Jason, what was it like in 2009 when, when the short sale market hit? How excited were short sale people? Well, first of all, not a lot of people really knew a lot about it. 
And I, I think now uh, the process is going to be a little bit different. And I still think not everybody's going to get involved with it. It's still like, oh, I don't want to wait as long. Well, that's fine. Folks like you and I can get in on it and realize it's not going to be our sole strategy because it, it can take, you know, three months, six months uh, to get a short sale approved by the bank. So that cannot be your number one strategy. You, you have to have another niche. And I'm gl glad you brought up some points here. Every, everything that we share on the, the channel, it, it should be taken as this. Like if we tell, if we share with you a strategy, I wouldn't recommend, you know, trying to implement five, six, seven different strategies. Find one, maybe two strategies that you really like, that you feel like you can do every single day and just do it. Uh, don't focus on five, six, seven different strategies. You're not going to see the results that you desire in your business. Trust me, I've been there. That's why I'm, I'm giving you that, that, that feedback. So I would encourage you to do that. Uh, focus on one or two things like we love tax delinquent stuff. Uh, that could be one. Um, and you could be doing that completely virtually. Uh, so hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully that helps. Uh, if anybody has any questions right now too, uh, go ahead and type them in uh, to the chat box. We'll be more than happy to answer anything for you. Uh, we're going to be wrapping up here soon. So go ahead and type that in. We'd love to answer any questions uh, that you guys have. I think I think one important thing we've missed here, probably probably the most important element when it comes to virtual wholesaling, and I'm, I think we I'm glad we saved this for the end actually because I think this is really important. Everybody on this call, I hope you have your volume turned up, and you've turned the Netflix and everything off that's been around you. Your phone's turned upside down because this honestly this is the most important bomb to drop. Okay, when you are creating a virtual wholesaling business and you're like, I'm going to do real estate. You need to find somebody, whether it's a partner or a spouse or a friend or just, you know, just somebody, you know, who's going to be a positive influence on that. Okay. Somebody that's going to tell you, like, you can talk to him like Jason, Jason and I do not do the same thing ever, hardly ever. Like I've got my schedule of calls. He's got his schedule of calls. I've got the leads I talk to. He's got the leads he talks We hardly ever, unless it's- Mike a likes Tapatio. I, I like Frank's hot sauce. I do love Tapatio. Yeah, Frank's Red Hot is good, but it's not the greatest. But the point is um, you have to find, I know, and you're not going to find, you know, a Jason. Let's just face it. He Unless you go back to the 90s and you go to Good Shepherd, you're not going to find a Mike or a Jason. But luckily enough for you guys and everybody on this call, uh, life and its infinite wisdom is creating new Jason and Mikes every day. So find somebody that doesn't necessarily need somebody you're going to work with, but somebody who believes that, yeah, you can do this. I'm going to do this deal. Okay, great. Yeah, I believe in you. I believe in you. That's that's all you need to hear. And one person believes in you and then you got the wherewithal and the, and the drive to do it yourself. Find yourself a Jason and Mike. And just, you know, divide up the tasks if you need to. And even if that task is, hey, I just need moral support. I, I'm going to do all the work. Just tell me I'm doing a good job and that I can do it. Or just don't tell me I'm not going to do it. You know, just don't be a negative influence in my life. <sighs> Great. Where do I find yeah. more about tax delinquents? Uh, email, again, Wise, Michael at JasonLucasi.com. I will be in touch with you about that. Today, folks, is I have one more call today. Today, folks, is my oldest son's birthday. So I will be tipping off a little bit early. So I hope you guys can forgive me for that. But yeah, bring, bring, bring Kenneth in here so we could all say happy birthday to him. Uh, let me text my wife. Let me but see. Yeah, um, the email's right there. If you guys have any questions, let us let us know. Uh, we would love to help you and uh, get you started. If you want uh, the tax delinquent stuff too, I'll share my screen with you so you can see what we did. So we could all say happy birthday to Kenneth because that, that is uh, that is fun. That'll give him a nice surprise. He's never been on. a. He's got he's got a birthday during the quarantine. So let's uh, let's give him a big shout out. Yeah. Come on. Uh, in. So this uh, where, where was it? Uh, right here. This video right here. Uh, wholesaling tax delinquent properties is right here. Oh, there he is. There he is. Come here. Come say hi. I just told everybody it was your birthday today. Oh. You want to get, get into the screen, Kenneth. I can see you. Come here. Come, come up, go to over your left. There you go. Jason. Happy birthday, buddy. Thanks. 
<laughs> Are you excited? Hey, everybody. Hello, everyone. There's, uh, there's a few. Oh, yeah, there. everybody's saying happy birthday to you, Kenneth. Bernadette. There you go. Oh, REI good. trainer. Thanks, Jason and Mike. Awesome duo. Happy birthday. Frida, happy birthday. Oh, Keith, happy birthday. It's my day. Look down a little bit. They can't see you. Look, see, that's how they see you right there. Oh. <laughs> happy birthday. Thanks. All right, Ken, we're going to finish up the video, but everybody just want to say happy birthday, all right? All right, ha happy birthday, buddy. We got uh, Marie. She said it too. Happy birthday. Oh. You'll be able to check it out later, too. All right, I'll see you in a bit, Ken. <laughs> I will. Bye. Thanks, everybody. Hey, thanks everybody for doing that. It's my my uh, my one son. Uh, not I have two sons and a daughter, but my uh, Brady, my oldest, had his birthday in the middle of April, so we couldn't really do anything for him. So uh, it kind of sucks not being able to go out on your birthday and uh, you know celebrate. So I appreciate all of you guys doing that. He's yeah, my nephew. You. Uh, so yeah, very cool of you guys to do that, but let's go ahead and wrap it up. Mike, did you have anything else that you wanted to add? Um, make sure you guys tune in for next week. Jason's giving away a JV agreement, uh, Wednesday, Wednesday. I'm sorry, man. I see. I screwed it up too. So tune in for Wednesday when J Jason's giving away a JV agreement. Let us know in the comments if you want us to do short sales or whatever other strategies, cause we can put those together. We're bringing <laughs> out another guest for Wednesday. Rocky. That was Rocky and Adrian's boy. Yeah. I forget what was, what was the name of the movie? I don't know. Somebody will type it in. Um, <laughs> this is never going to go away. Um, or anything else, just let us know. Same thing with the tools. If you guys are kind of like, hey, I'm looking at all. I know. We know. Jason and I know. He gets a tool and he's like, Mike, because again, we do different things. He's he's like, hey, we need to be in this range. This is the budget. Here's what we're going to be at. I don't want to spend any more on this, on this type of tool. Like, Here's what we want to work with. What do you, and then he'll give me a list of three or four different tools and I'll go play through them. And I'll be like, Hey man, this is what we need to sign up with. All right. He signs up with it and we're good to go. Like you should have a simple process like that. So if you need help with those types of things, let us know and, and we'll create a video and save yourself thousands of dollars and a lot of headaches. Yep. Absolutely. But Hey, I, I know we're definitely, we went longer than expected. I wasn't uh, expecting to go <laughs> this long on, on the live stream. So for those of you that are still with us right now, thank you so much. Uh, we'll be coming to you again, live 2 30 PM Eastern. We'll be uh, going to be covering some really awesome stuff on lease options. So uh, make sure you check out the channel, make sure you become a subscriber uh, and you'll receive a notification of when we uh, put that out and available for you. And other than that, if you have any questions, I'll put up Mike's uh, thing uh, so you could contact him. I mean, email uh, Michael at jasonlucchese.com. Mr. Tapatio is waiting for you. Oh, I've got me this shirt. I like this shirt. You know, my I, I learned about Tapatio in California. So everybody here that's in California probably knows what I'm talking about. Uh, yes, I'd love your training. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much for the feedback. Really appreciate you. Uh, Frida, thanks again. Yes, absolutely. Very well. uh, thank you for your kind words. I appreciate you. Uh, everybody else, thank you so much for being with us today. Big happy birthday to, to Kenneth as well. And uh, we will see you guys on Wednesday. Take care. Bye now.